I want to show you a good trick for accelerated motion and looking at graphs of accelerated motion. Um, these are really common things. Uh, first of all, I just want to show you this one. I like the Velociraptor. It's just, you know, it's almost like it's a velocity, so it's a distance over time. Ha uh ha. -huh. Um, I like this one right here too, the don't be a, and this is the third derivative of position with respect to time. You know, the second derivative of position in time is uh, acceleration. Turns out we have something in physics that's the third derivative. It's actually called jerk. So that's why it's don't be a jerk. <laughs> so uh, to do this accelerated motion and graphing, um, I'm going to use an example of rolling a can up a soup, uh, a can of soup up an incline. So what I mean by that is, uh, let's just imagine then I have my trusty uh, can of soup here. See, my name is, uh, last name is Campbell. So of course I would use a Campbell soup can. But what I would end up doing then is I would have this incline here. And what I would do, I would take this little can of soup, I'd start it here and I'd sort of roll it up the hill. And I'd have a little detector right here that can actually say the um, displacement. It's a little uh, sonic ranger, so it tells you the distance from uh, the beginning. So that's the displacement. So, you know, I would say at the beginning, obviously the distance from uh, the start is zero. At some time, it goes up to the top somewhere, and after that it stops, and then it comes back down again. So what I want to do is show you then what these graphs then of displacement versus time should look like. This will be time in seconds. And this will be displacement, in this case, right here in meters. But I'm also going to graph velocity versus time here, which is in meters per second versus time. And I'm also going to graph acceleration. I'm going to put these graphs underneath each other for a reason. You'll see that in a second here. You'll see why this is awesome, what I'm doing here. Um, so what I'm going to do then is just consider what's going on with the motion of this thing right here. So if we Think about the motion at the very, very beginning. It starts off with uh, no displacement, right? So that means it should be right here, no displacement. At time t equals zero, displacement should be zero. At some point, it's uh, some maximum height above the ground. So I don't know, maybe it's something here. And at some point, then it comes back down again. So that means at some time, it's probably symmetric. So it's probably over here. And if you think about what shape it should have, it should be a nice, smooth curve, so some sort of parabola here. That should be the displacement versus time. Now the graph of velocity versus time, remember now how do you get from displacement to velocity to acceleration? Uh, the nice little trick I want to show you is this one right here. So whenever you go down in graph, so in this case that's what we're doing. You start off with a graph of displacement and you go down to velocity. This down and up only makes sense if you consider these three graphs uh, one on top of each other like this. Like this is first, this is second, this is third. But if you're going down, what you do is this. So I'll say down, I'll say that means uh, gradient. It's technically in the calculus terms, it's supposed to be the derivative. And just like I'm gonna say up, it's gonna be the area under the curve, which in math terms, that's called the integral. Right? So area under the curve is up, down is the gradient. This is the trick. Because if you think of it this way, then you can actually work it out, right? You can say, all right, uh, let's look at this first graph right here. Um, if I want to go from displacement to velocity, then I'm going down. So what that means, I have to take the gradient. So what I do is I think about the gradient here at this point. Gradient of a tangent line of that graph right there is going to be some straight line that goes like that. And that line has a positive slope. I don't know what its value is. It's some positive number here. It's some positive thing. Uh, right here in the middle, lined up right here at the middle, something very special happens. The tangent line is flat. Can you see that? It's exactly flat. If the tangent line is flat, uh, that means the slope of the tangent is zero. Right? The slope is rise over run. It doesn't rise or, uh, so, or go down. It doesn't go up or down. So that means its slope is zero. That means the value of the velocity then is zero because the slope of this graph is zero. It means the value of the velocity graph is zero here. And over here, the slope of the tangent line is some negative value. And it's probably the same as this. So this is negative, and whatever this was, how high, this would be negative. And if I did it right, it should look like a straight line. It should be a straight line. It also should make sense if you think about math. This is a quadratic. It's an x squared. Take the derivative of an x squared. It gives you a linear function. It gives you an x. See, that should work. And furthermore, if I want to take a velocity graph and go down again, um, I do the derivative of that. So in this case right here, think about the derivative of this graph right here at this point. It's some negative value, right? Look at the slope of the tangent right here. Isn't it also some negative value and some same negative slope? And over here, the slope is also the same negative value. So in this case, it'd be some negative constant value. 
I hope that'll make sense too. When you take the derivative of like a, I don't know, two X, the derivative will just be two. In this case, if you do the derivative of this thing right here, uh, if you do this right, you can actually end up extracting out of this the acceleration due to gravity. You can actually get that it's negative 9.81 if you calibrate it properly. Isn't that a cool trick? Now, if you want to go up, um, then you just have to take the area under the curve. So that means if you're starting with a velocity curve, um, or starting with a velocity, and you're asked for something about displacement, then you can think, ah, displacement is above velocity. So I'm going up, so I'll take the area under the curve. So in this case, I would take the area of this triangle here, let's just say. Now that's how you can do it. So let's maybe look at an example, put this all in uh, perspective here. This is quite common, especially on paper one. They love these kind of questions here. So, um, but also it could show up on paper two as well. So this kind of graph right here, let's just say it's a graph like this and it goes like that. So we have some sort of function and we have a velocity versus time here. Velocity versus time. We want the acceleration. Think about this, acceleration, how is it related to velocity again? Go back to this little trick, you're given velocity, if you want acceleration, you're going down, aren't you? If you go down, you take the gradient. That's how you know to take the gradient of this graph. So at two seconds, let's see. Um, oops, I think something here got a little bit messed up. Here. Let me just see if I can grab these and move them. These should be like this. There we go. So if we do this then, um, I'm going to do this right here at two seconds. Then it should look something like, uh, see the gradient right here? If I drew a tangent line right here, at two seconds. Can you see that right here? It would look like this. It would be something flat, wouldn't it? And a gradient at two seconds. Oops, at t equals two seconds. The gradient is zero. So my acceleration is zero as well. Is it zero meters per second squared or just zero? Isn't that awesome? So you can actually deal with really, really kind of weird looking things and you can totally do them. Uh, maybe I'll just get this out of there. Oh, no. I was trying to do something clever, but I guess I'm not that clever. I don't know. There we go. Take that one. I don't know. You know what? Forget it. I'll just leave it. Not worth the trouble. Um, so I want to find the distance traveled. And again, I'm given a velocity graph. So think about it. If I want the distance traveled from velocity, think about it. Distance is up. That's a displacement, right? Displacement is a measure of distance. So if I want the distance traveled, I go up. Therefore, I have to take the area under the curve. So in this case, I'm going to need the area. So I'm able to do this in a different color here. So I'll take the so distance, whoops, distance equals the area under the curve. So here's the problem. I need to consider what's the area then under the curve in the first three seconds. And maybe it helps to split this up into two pieces. Can you see I'm going to have to take the area underneath this thing right here? And I'm going to have to take the area underneath this thing right here as well. I'll need that one. So maybe I'll say uh, area of the triangle. Let's figure out that area. That area is, let's see, it's a base times height divided by two, isn't it? So the base is one, the height is five, and I divide that by two. So I end up with five divided by two, which is 2.5. Think about the units for this too. Area is length times width, right? Or in this case here, it's meters per second times seconds. If you think about that meters per second with a second on the top, the seconds cancel out, you just get meters. Good news, that's a unit of distance. Let's see when the units work out. I need the area of the sort of square part. You need to be really careful. The length is not three. It goes from one to three. So the distance from one to three is actually two. And I multiply that by the height, which is five. And it's a nice square, so just a two times five suffices, right? It was only, I only divided by two here uh, because I had to uh, have a triangle. So here I have a square, so it's just this, which is 10 meters. So what's the total area then? So the distance traveled then is just 10 plus 2.5. So that equals 12.5 meters. Awesome! That's how you solve this.